India-Canada ties have hit an all-time low this week after allegations by Canadian federal police suggested that agents of Delhi are working with organized criminals, including the Bishnoi gang, to quote-unquote target the South Asian community, specifically pro-Khalistani elements in Canada. The allegations have been preceded by each side reject, ejecting six diplomats, including high-ranking envoys like Canada's acting High Commissioner Stuart Wheeler and India's High Commissioner Sanjay Varma. In the past one year, since the Canadian government levelled false charges of India having credible allegations of potential link to the Nijar case, no proof has surfaced. As Trudeau doubles down, today we present India's point-by-point -point rebuttal. So yes, I mean, it, it is targeting the South Asian community, but... We, what we've seen is there's, there's specific targeting of a pro Palestine um, elements in Canada or members of the pro Palestine movement. And just to follow up, what we're talking about um, extortions, uh, organized crime being used, um, you know, we within the community have seen that folks that are targeted, are targeted in these uh, incidents are not just people that have been are linked to uh, the Khalsan movement or the Six Self-Determination movement. Uh, are you... Joining us live is Bhashwati Mukherjee, former diplomat. We also have Sumit Peer, political commentator, live with us. Surinder Singh Lali, international affairs expert, joins us live. Sanjay Lazar, CEO of uh, Avialaz, is also with us on the broadcast. Let me make a start with you first, Ambassador Mukherjee. Uh, uh, big development, of course, uh, playing out uh, in this standoff between India and Canada. What do you make of the Canadian response to this move by India? The move by India was in response to Canada's action, aggressive, provocative, without any basis whatsoever, and giving the impression that India, a respectable, respected, emerged country, a country of 180 billion people, that we would indulge in such shenanigans as to link up with gangsters who are in our prison cells, and with their assistance, start targeting known terrorists whom they are harboring for their own domestic agenda back in Canada. This really takes to a new low what the Canadian Prime Minister is doing. And I really wonder if Canada, which I always thought was a very respectable <coughs> country, really deserves such a man as their, at their helm. Because what he is doing is, he is single-handedly destroying a vibrant bilateral relationship which for decades had functioned extremely well until the Kanishka came down and his own father, so it seems to be a father to son problem, refused to take any action of when it was known who were the perpetrators of, of that terrible misadventure when most of those who were killed were Canadian citizens. Now he's taken it to a new low and he's taking it to a point of no return because if he continues in this manner, I am very sorry for there to say on national television that it could result in India breaking relations, diplomatic relations with Canada. That would be a very drastic move because there's a huge diaspora. The diaspora is desperate. The diaspora is telephoning their friends and relatives, including me. I have many friends. I have my sister there. They, they are worried. They don't support this fringe element. They say that this is being done because Trudeau has to pass his budget in February. That fringe element has withdrawn its support. He is going all out to get them back on his side. But in the process, he is actually destroying one of the most important bilateral relationships that India has with Canada and Canada has with India. And there is no doubt that if he continues in this manner and encourages the Canadian Royal Mounted Police to make the kind of allegations they've made in public, what can a respectable country do but break diplomatic relations? I think we are fast approaching the point there when we will have to break diplomatic relations. Udai. All right. Uh, well, that will be, of course, a very serious development, uh, as you're saying. Uh, but it looks uh, perhaps in the offing. Let me uh, draw in uh, Sumit Peer in at this point. Uh, Sumit, uh, what do you make of, uh, you know, the, the constant, uh, you know, allegations being leveled by Canada, their response, of course, to this move by India, and how India so far has handled this situation. Uday, thank you very much for having me on your show. The, you know, this show is very important because 
what we have seen right now is a movement of pride for all of the Indians because this is exactly what the government of India should have done. And full congratulations to Prime Minister Modi and Dr. Jayashankar for exactly giving them what they deserve. In fact, they have been testing our patients for too long. I have seen a video yesterday on the social media. There was some, they made an effigy of our ambassador there, you know, High Commissioner there, and somebody was shooting with, with a gun and they were burning that effigy. Though it's, it was banned on India, but somebody sent me from Canada. When I looked through that video, it was hard breaking. How could you do this? And your police has honesty to write us a letter through your their, their embassy on a Sunday that your ambassador who has a service of 26 or 36 years, you know, a distinct service has served in all the Western countries, America, all China, all the major powers of the world, that he is involved with the gang. Well, for gangster who's in jail and you are trying to eliminate some people on, you know, ground and this is we want to investigate him. Now, where is the diplomatic, uh, you know, protocols? Where is the diplomatic community? Where are those things? Now, can your police wala walk and start, you know, questioning ambassadors? If you if you want to have that privilege, you know, we have a lot of police here, huh? and we have a lot of state police here. We can tomorrow go and pull any ambassador out of any embassy and start doing this. Where on the earth does the local police have the authority to go and question ambassador? What happens to the diplomatic immunity? And you have been always repeating the same old broken record, Niger, Niger, Niger. Where is the proof? Until yesterday, 5.30, when they were called in by MEA, they did not have give us a proof. Last one and a half years, you have been repeating the same thing. Where is the proof? And yesterday, there was a press release. We are doing all the proof. When we told you that we are calling our ambassadors back, when we have issued a demarching order to your staff, then you are saying we have given some proof. If you had the proof, you should have given it in last one and a half years. You have been always paddling your lies because I was very candid on your show and your channel. It's the only country where K elements, I will not call them Khalistanis, where the K elements have entered and infiltrated the government. They have not infiltrated the government. They are able to manage the policies of the government. Forget the domestic policies of the government. They are able to dictate the international policies of the government. And this person, who I'm sorry, is a failed actor, is a failed model, is a failed businessman. Now, as, as of course, a failed prime minister in making. Now, this man has, you know, taken a war. He has started a war with the world's largest democracy for no rhyme, legion, and logic. And how come his police... I don't know what you call the mounted police by kiss gade gore pe I don't want to talk even that. Now what are what is their business and all doing all this? The challenge here is he's a very incompetent man. He just wants to stick to the power and he is riding the fringe. I have seen Canadian media reports today, and there are a lot of media outlets in Canada. They are making fun of him. They are criticizing his last visit to India. They are questioning the outcome of the visit. How can somebody be so selfish? And how can somebody put the you know future of so many Canadians and our diaspora there in a jeopardy? Because you want to be in power, you want to be controlling things. You are a person who has gone against the world's biggest democracy. And the most popular leader of the world, Narendra Modi ji, we have been very patient with you. You have threatened our High Commissioner, you have threatened our External Affairs Minister, you have threatened our Prime Minister, still we have been very patient with you. But yesterday, you have crossed the Rekha. You crossed the Lakshma Rekha. You crossed the Lakshma Rekha. We said, enough is enough. Within two hours, we showed you the power of India. And let me tell you, they did not expel Indian diplomats. We pulled back our diplomatic staff. We ask their diplomats to leave. We have no relation with Vishnoi. There is nothing Vishnoi has done there. There is not a shred of evidence they have. And this Royal Canadian Mounted Police, I don't think they live in Jurassic era. I don't know which horses or mules do they ride, but they really need to ride the reality. What happened to the that Baloch girl which was killed? What happened to the Sikh leader who was pro-India who was killed? Have you able to find anybody? Have you solved all the crimes here? Chinese intelligence, the ISI intelligence, it has become a backyard for them to do whatever they want. What is the crime rate in Canada? Now, out of the whole of the Canada and whole of the crime of Canada, you have found one person, that is our ambassador. And that's our High Commissioner. You want to go and question him around some alleged killing of a terrorist. And let us not forget, Nizar was a terrorist with an AK-47. Nizar was a terrorist who went to Pakistan to get trained. Nizar was a terrorist <coughs> who was training terrorists in Canada. And if this is the kind of political patronage you give to the terrorists, and that's what IMEA yesterday said, Canada has become a land where terrorists are getting patronage. Anti-India elements, separatist elements, they are given complete patronage and political coverage there. That is what the reality of the life is. And there's a limit India can take it. We have done everything. But beyond that, every, you know, you know, push comes to shove. You have to call it a day one. You have to call it a day one day. And that is what exactly we did. What Canada is doing is completely atrocious, uncalled for, unethical, and un unbelievable in today's time. 
I think this is worse than Chinese diplomacy. We used to call Chinese this wolf warrior diplomacy. I don't know what kind of a diplomacy will be called. Theodore Doctrine or something. It will be a new name of their diplomacy. It will be taught to a lot of our IFS officers. How can a country mess up with a world scale, the like, largest democracy like this? And you know what Modi ji rightly said. Vanshavad, sabse bada dushman hai democracy ka. That's this dynastic politics is the biggest enemy of the democracy. If there was no dynastic politics there, this man won't be there because he's his papa's son. That is why he's there. If this papa's son was not there, Canada would have an able, competent leader and able and competent leaders who are not dynast, who rise to power on their merits would have not done such an atrocious act. I mean, it's for the you know people of Canada to choose whom they want to vote for. But he has let Canada down. He has let democracies down. That's what I can say with it. All right. Uh, let me, in fact, uh, quickly uh, take that to Surinder Singh Lali as well. Surinder Singh Lali, the fact is, uh, you know, that this crisis uh, and standoff between the two nations only seems to be widening with each passing day. Where do you see the situation headed? Uh, and what, according to you, uh, has been the trigger for this fresh escalation? Thank you. And that's a fantastic question. What is the trigger? I mean, I don't know what sort of rocket scientist this Justin Trudeau is, and uh, I don't know how to demystify his thought process, but I've just made five points out of, you know, some of it could be possible. Number one, is he plainly that foolish enough to ruin a relationship between two democracies, two partners, large diaspora, 400,000 students, two million, you know, Indians staying in Canada, to do what just to save his dwindling political career, which anyway is going to go south by next year. Is he, is he being run or the shots are being called by the southern neighbor? Please understand, I have a feeling that there has to be, there should be and there could be the United States of America also influencing him because he's at the end of the day a wingman. And if you see both the controversies, they are trying to link also from both Niger and Pannu. That's what they are trying to link it. And no wonder that the, 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 the case has gone to the southern district of New York City, <clears throat> where three people from the government of India have left to defend our, or express our point of view. Number three, is, is he trying to take away focus from the huge, humongous influence of the Chinese in Canada? Because he's facing a query too. And in inquiry to and he has to appear before the inquiry. So maybe he's trying to evade that. And as Mr. P rightly said, and of course, Ambassador Mukherjee too. I mean, this seems to be a genetical disease because his father did the same mess up in the 80s when Indira Gandhi asked him to extradite, you know, Parmar. They had all information that two Johnnies were going and, you know, using explosives just outside <clears throat> the city limits. But he didn't pay any heed to it. And look what happened. You know, we lost uh, a, a plane and Sanjay Ji will enlighten you more on that. So I'm not going to waste my time and energy on that. Now, in an act of the biggest Freudian slip in the world, Piro Trudeau calls up Rajiv Gandhi and expresses condolences for the loss. I mean, that gentleman should have understood that most of the people were Canadian citizens. So if anything, it should have been the other way around. So I think these father and son are dismally, they fail at, uh, you know, they, they failed at the political career and as a bouncer and as a model, whatever he's been doing. Uh, my question now, my concern is today that the way the, the cyber kinetic warfare has been on and uh, there is deep penetration of the K elements in the Canadian way of life, so much so that they, you know, the, the prime minister is beholden to them. Should we still be flying Air India out of that country? Because all it takes is one lunatic, and believe me, there are a lot of them, especially given the K gang. And you know, ISI is so strong too. So should we leave? Our airlines that vulnerable. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm getting goose flesh even thinking about it because all it takes is one idiot. And, you know, we could have another disaster, which God forbid, God forbid, we don't. So my concern is that we need to worry because the way the pager bombs and all of this has been going on, we don't know. And my last point is, you know, so much has been spoken, although the jury's out in the Niger case and, you know, supposedly we've been accused. Would Justin Trudeau have the spine to look up the GPS location and see where Qasem Soleimani was killed? where bin laden was killed 
And if he has the spine or the guts or the gumption to ask this question, he probably would, you know, die of shame. So these are my limited points. So they are at this point. Okay. Let me uh, take that to uh, Sanjay Lazar as well. Sanjay Lazar, uh, you know, where do you see India-Canada ties headed in the near future? What uh, direction is this crisis now going to take next? Is a complete break off in the offing, as Ambassador Mukherjee was suggesting earlier, or, or do you believe there can? be some salvaging. Thank you Ulay, for having me on your show. I, I, you know, my, the eminent guests who preceded me, Ambassador Mukherjee, Peerji, Lali Sahab, have all spoken in depth about this issue. I just wanted to make a few points. Uh, one is, rightly said, Nijjar was a terrorist. Not one person has realized that on the day he was killed, he was on the no-fly list of the US as well as Canada. His bank accounts were frozen. His properties were seized in India and the US. Who did that? The US government and the Indian government and the Canadian government. So he was a terrorist, number one. Number two, the, the entire allegation stems from some, you know, folk, hocus pocus uh, gangster who's, who's supposed to have done this. Nothing of that sort happened. Okay, this is all speculation. This is purely an attempt to reach out to his domestic market so that he can win you know, get back the support of, of the, of the let's say, the radical K gang who are now infiltrating again, as Lali Saab said, even the South, the Southern neighbor is now both the Democrats and the Republicans have got enough of them infiltrated within the new campaign. So we can see that's a very dangerous sign for us. I want, you know, to, to answer your point, question very specifically, I can only see Indo-Canadian relations going downhill. I would like, and I congratulate our Prime Minister, our External Affairs Minister, for the bold, brave steps they took. I think all parties, bipartisan, we must stand behind Modi ji and Jay Shankar ji, regardless of which political party you've done, you are from, because it takes guts to do what we've done, and it should have been done a long time ago. I lost my entire family in that bombing in the Kanishka decades ago. I don't want anybody else to be losing their lives, like Lali Saab said. Five things. Indian government must issue safety directives to all Indians in Canada. Like the Canadians have put on their website, it's dangerous to come to India. Number two, advise students to return home. There are 437,000 students. We spend over $120 million a year only on fees in that country. Indians, bring them home because you don't want to have you know, them getting attacked or, or you know, impacted. The third thing is, please tell airlines flying in and out of Canada to ramp up security as though you're facing a bomb threat every day. You know, make it five hours security if you have to, or stop flights, one of the two. And, you know, let's start the isolation of Canada from the Indian economy. It's very important. There is a trade deficit between the two countries. Canada needs India more than India needs Canada in trade. Let's start using our economic might and restrict consular services both in India and in Canada, and let's take take it step by step. The gloves have to come off completely. This nonsensical case is ridiculous. And look at what Panun has done yesterday, Seeks for Justice. They've now put a five, half a million dollar reward on the whereabouts of Sanjay Kumar, our counselor, our uh, high commissioner there. They put out a notice saying half a million U US dollars will be paid to somebody who gives information even after he leaves Canada. Now, if that is not terrorism, what is? You know, I heard Mr. Trudeau speaking on TV in his press conference saying he respects the sovereignty of India. And yet at the same time, he's permitted two referendums within his country to break my our country. Completely nonsensical. Completely nonsensical. Let's understand. I mean, they are playing with, with fire. They, they go... And, and this goes across party lines, let me tell you over there. They attend parades of, of, uh, of course, the Sikh religion. But on that, you know, on those dais, they have pictures of, of our killers of, of Bian Singh Ji, Indira Ji, you know, all our political uh, leaders of, of the bombings of, of Kanishka. This is what they do. This has become their culture, gun culture. And, and we need to, you know, I'm glad we pulled back. Uh, we are one step away from, you know, literally designating them a terrorist state. Uh, let's pull back our economic, uh, you know, muscle as well. I think that's hit them where it hurts. It's important. That's the only way they'll come into shape. All right. Uh, I'll leave the last word. Uh, yes. Okay. Surinder Lali has a quick point. Yes. 
I want to thank music from the bottom of my heart because you know the moment Sanjay ji said seeks for justice I don't know how to react because you cannot use the name of one of the youngest strongest and evolved religions with such loose elements who are not even worth wasting a bullet on so thank you news is for allowing me the kinds of me the space I don't need to say that none of the seeks there could be a fringe which yes. are everywhere but we don't subscribe to this k narrative they are just useless individuals who under the bogey of free speech are nourished by the failures of just in trudeau all right Thank i leave the last that. word to ambassador mukherjee just to say um, you know that mr trudeau has unleashed forces that he may not be able to control the way the events are unraveling there including what i also saw on social media yesterday like some it which was a fake assassination of our high commissioner the complete violation of the vienna convention the attempt possibly to even confine him or or restrain him or to arrest him uh which is again a complete violation of the vienna convention uh these are measures which unleash certain actions which will demand powerful counter reaction because the indian public is outraged and we are a democracy therefore whether we like it or not we are moving inexorably to crossing what we call the rubicon from which we cannot return it is for mr trudeau to reflect that he is moving the two countries in a direction where once the rubicon is crossed india would have to take certain actions which would take a very very long time to unravel again and if it is being done at right. the bs of the southern neighbor i might like to add the southern neighbor at the lower level has has is not being controlled at the upper level so the strategic partnership is at one level at the higher level and is at another level is that is is being mishandled at the lower level the elections are on therefore until 6th of november i'm afraid that we cannot do anything as far as the southern neighbor of canada is concerned with it for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon